Welcome to Chapter 13, Health Promotion, Disease Prevention. I'm Jeremy Wicker. Let's get started. So, special populations are everywhere. And special populations, high-risk populations, I'm going to use those terms fairly interchangeably. Um, they're hard-to-reach populations that have been marginalized from mainstream society for one reason or another. Um, and again, it, they're, they're no two the same. Again, like I said, it's a mix of circumstances that have basically led people kind of outside the mainstream for one reason or another. Um, some of these groups can include migrants who often are reluctant to work with government organizations because of perceived risk related to immigration deportation. Uh, First Nations people who, again, often have a long mistrust of formalized government systems and often remain um, outside of regular society uh, you don't see it in Iowa so much. Uh, the Meskwaki settlement and others are fairly well integrated, but other places they are very, very remote and, again, very reluctant to work with outsiders. Uh, the LGBTQ population, uh, obviously a lot of these individuals have gone through a lot in their first 10, 20 years uh, and have some unique health issues. For example, amongst the transgender population, smoking is around 80, 90 percent. Um, so, so again, things you may not think of. Uh, again, other youth from high high crime, low opportunity areas, again, who have been who don't have entry entry into the traditional job market, and they often will find again into gangs, into drugs, things like that, as other ways to make money. Um, and again, don't want to work with government agencies as much, or or maybe reluctant to embrace those. Uh, rural populations, just because, not that rural populations are that hard of a nut to crack, but they can be hard because there are very far-flung communities. We think of what we think of rural in Iowa may be very different than what is rural in Wyoming or rural in Montana, you know, a place where it takes two hours to get to. Uh, and it's just hard to deliver services consistently to a town of 500 people that's two hours from anything through the mountains. So... But I don't think of rural in maybe the Iowa sense of rural, where you're never more than about a half hour, hour from a decent sized city in a hospital, but more really out there. Um, again, youth who drop out of high school, and of course, those who are in the foster program, uh, because again, they tend to get marginalized, tougher to find jobs, um, often kind of become cliquish with other people. The chapter talks about those kind of in the skinhead punk community. Uh, and then, of course, adults and youth who have been to prison, uh, because once you've been to prison, very hard to find a job, uh, very hard to integrate back into normal society. So, again, those people become marginalized as well. Um, so, for these people, health is often a secondary concern. They're not worried about health problems. They've got problems just trying to food and shelter, go back to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. They don't care about you know, eating junk food, they just care about getting food. Uh, you know, they may not really worry about the long-term side effects of using drugs because they don't expect to live past 25 or 30. So again, health or a health message is often going to be lost because that is further down the line for them. Um, and again, the book lists about six important things, working with high-risk populations. I, I kind of focus on four of them. Earning trust, uh, getting access, maintaining confidentiality, and of course, just being honest. Uh, you, need, can, you need to be very authentic. I was in a situation where I was running a needle exchange program. Now, I'm about the least, I, I don't look like I, I use injection drugs. I didn't have any cachet in that community. I was an outsider. I wasn't even from the community. Um, I didn't actually do it. I ran the program, but I actually had uh, some health outreach workers, uh, a couple of which were former addicts who actually worked the program. Uh, because they were going to have, they're going to be more authentic, they're going to be honest, they're going to be known to them, they had access, they could earn trust. Things that I couldn't do, and I had to understand my limitations as far as that went. Uh, so the end of the chapter talks about two approaches. Harm reduction is a very well-known approach. Generative is his own research. I never even heard of it before I read it. Um, I'm not going to ask you any qu test questions over generative, so if you want to ignore that part, by all means do. Or if you want to read it, that's fine. Harm reduction is very important. Um, it meets people where they are and is non-judgmental. It focuses on the disease and not the behavior. 
again, when it talks about injection drug use, it's talking about stopping the spread of HIV and hepatitis C by making sure people are using clean needles. You're not judging them about the drug use itself. Um, again, what, how I always, again, when I was running a needle exchange, I explain to people that, at least others, saying one day they're going to be off drugs, and when they do, we like them to be disease-free so they can, again, get back into society um, and not basically have to, you know, it's basically once they get drugs, being so sick that they can't work or do anything or have any quality of life. So, again, you have to have to separate the two. It can be a little hard because obviously drugs are very destructive in their own way, but, you know, we can't kind of separate those. Um, and again, it can be controversial for the very reason that some see it as a mixed message. We're saying drugs aren't so bad, the disease is bad. Well, they're both bad. And we haven't attacked a, a chance to attack one, so we will. All right, so your assignments, you've already talked about this before. Uh, the Assignment 11 is the worksheet where you compare the two uh, commercials. Assignment 12 is the Global Health Pioneer that you feature by April 6th. It's a Wednesday in the middle of the module. Uh, notice no assignment 13, and then marketing and public health, and then the pioneer that you're going to cut and paste again by April 6th. And then week 13 actually does feature this chapter. It's a, one of the harder discussion boards. Is kind of looking up um, about foster children, what happens to them when they graduate out, and what puts them at risk. Why is this a difficult population? Why does this keep happening? So, again, a little bit tougher. There's not a uh, week 13 assignment, but the discussion board is a little tougher. Thank you for watching and good luck out there.